Hello, my name is Robin Hismi, and I am honored to provide an introduction to William Shakespeare's The Rape of Lucrece for the Shakespeare 2020 project. William Shakespeare composed this narrative poem for a patron when the theaters were closed due to the plague, and so there is already at least one uncanny parallel with our own cultural moment. At the end, I will suggest another tragic parallel. But first, let's talk about the Tarquin Lucrece origin story. Then we'll consider how Shakespeare shapes this in his own version. And finally, we'll think about the legacy for ourselves. Before I begin, please be aware that in addition to the sexual assault announced in the title of this text, it also contains disturbing material related to suicide. So the Roman historical context for this text is that in 509 BC, Rome was ruled by a king, Tarquin the Proud. It is the king's son, Tarquin, of course, who steals away from his military camp where Rome is besieging Ardea to follow his lust and passion for Lucrece. His lust had been inflamed by Lucrece's husband's accounts of her chastity and beauty. And Lucrece, in her naivete, believes that Tarquin has arrived to bring her news of her husband. She admits him to her house, and during the night, he approaches her bedroom to violate her, threatening to destroy her reputation if she does not succumb to his violent lust. After the rape, Lucrece reveals the violation to her husband and her father, demanding that they avenge her before stabbing herself. Her body is displayed in the Roman Forum, sparking a revolt against the Tarquins, and the royal family is exiled and Rome is established as a republic ruled by a senate and elected consuls. So this is a foundational story for that political shift. Now in Shakespeare's moment, for Shakespeare's London, Rome was considered a foundational cultural model whose narratives were related through numerous classical and medieval writers before becoming staples of the early modern classroom. The Lucrece narrative, as with other Roman legends, was interpreted from multiple and varied perspectives. A political understanding of this tale, for example, suggests that there are circumstances in which subjects should resist tyranny and even challenge the authority of a ruling monarch. Culturally, rape and suicide converge in the figure of Lucrece sexual violation of a female body contaminates the family, and suicide offers an honorable path to expunge shame and restore virtue. Of course, both of these readings, as well as others, are fraught with tension between ideas about the past and the multifaceted present. For example, although suicide in Rome is honorable, it is a terrible sin for the Elizabethans. And attitudes towards female chastity and honor and the questions of rape are also vexed and obsessively debated topics for Shakespeare's moment. I'd like to turn to three structural features within this text that I believe help us uh, understand Shakespeare's take on this narrative. So watch out for them as you read and consider how they impact your response to the characters and themes of this work. The first is the blazon. A blazon was a formal description of a coat of arms transposed by Petrarch into his lyric poetry and ultimately utilized heavily by the early modern sonneteers. It provides a description of the physical attributes of the beloved, who is often female. Consider how Shakespeare utilizes this device to catalog and anatomize more than just physical features. The blazon he offers does not just catalog Lucrece's beauty, but it also becomes a vehicle to consider virtue and other internal features of characters. Second, psychomachia. Psychomachia is a classic conflict between vice and virtue, and it's often depicted visually as a good angel on one shoulder and a bad angel on the other. As Tarquin approaches Lucrece's bedroom, we participate in his thoughts as he wavers between rejecting his impending violent and aggressive assault on Lucrece and then justifying it so that we participate in the hesitations, doubts, and compulsion which drive him forward. 
This intensity continues when Tarquin enters Lucrece's bedroom, but the focalization shifts so that the reader is then aligned with Lucrece in her terror and fear, experiencing through her emotional state the shifting stages of response to the sexual violation. Third, ekphrasis. Ekphrasis is a device in which part or all of a literary text or work describes, comments on, or analyzes another painting or work of art. Once Lucrest decides on a plan to reveal Tarquin's rape, demand revenge, and commit suicide to restore her honor, she spends a lot of time contemplating a painting of a scene from the Trojan War, a conflict which was also provoked by the rape or abduction of Helen. Lucrece provides exquisite details of the painting, aligning herself with Hecuba Sorrow, but also foregrounding the trope of rape as an attack on a city. Her emphasis on the emotional state of the characters once again directs us to states of mind. These three features, the blazon, the psychomachia, and the ekphrasis, I argue, suggests that Shakespeare was intensely interested in showcasing the interiority of the mind, shifting the emphasis of these events from the political to the personal, and demanding that the reader participate in the dilemmas of choice, action, and consequence, and reflect on questions of volition, guilt, and shame. As you read, consider how Lucrece's tale is similar to or different from Lavinia's rape and death in Titus Andronicus, and consider how this tragic tale is still relevant to our own moment, as the Me Too movement has revealed. How does Shakespeare's narrative invite us to scrutinize the practices of thought and habits of mind regarding male action and female chastity, which are still a tragic feature of our patriarchal legacy? Thank you.